evening all. Oh, that's hot tea. <clears throat> do, 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 do. Right, let's have a look at what we've got today. How is everyone this evening? Well, evening here. Let me just uh, notify everyone. hot tea. It's actually been really chilly here the last few uh, few days. It's still a bit drafty in here quite frankly. Uh, let us bring up the um, to do list. Uh, why isn't the Oh. Oh, ah, this one. This one here. Just want to move that up because I've been doing some spy Don't need two of those. I think we need to possibly look at that. Um, what else do we need to consider? Uh, let me just check my rates. Network rate looking good. Um, hi, Laurie. Just realise the description's got a typo. Just correct that before we move on. I think that updates dynamically. Um, so, what have I been working on? I've been working on um, I did some stuff on the Black Crap software, which I'll come back round to. I was also, um, I added some pictures in, I took some pictures with the camera early. So I needed some pictures of the board because we need to uh, work on the repo documentation. Um, how's my audio by the way Laurie, is everything alright I think? Let me know if it isn't. Um, the the repo needs at least the readme needs updating for the um the ice logic deck repo and the other thing i'm working on is <sighs> describing the project etc etc um i need this because uh, in order to um get things out there to people I need to have some sort of um, 
documentation, description, etc. And particularly, I've got to look at things like setup and stuff like that as well. So if I get some boards in, we need to just make that process relatively uh, easy for installation and things like that. So there's still quite a bit of documentation has got to be done. Just notice this isn't very sharp. What's going on here? It's not brilliant. <clears throat> um, I spent quite a bit of time looking again at Rust libraries um, and that was quite interesting because I realised um, when I was trying to do the changes uh, what was it Friday I think we were working on the um, Spy changes, the initial spy changes, I believe, and the updates. And because of the issues I had, I, I, I decided to have a look and see, you know, why it was so painful making the changes that I was making. Um, Um, and there are a raft of reasons. I mean, Rust isn't easy anyhow. Let's, let's just get that straight. It's not, not trivial. It's very unforgiving. It wants you to get it right before compile. And the type stuff is quite, quite tricky. But if you look at what we're using, um, I mean, embedded Rust itself isn't what I'd call well established. A lot of the things within it are moving targets, including the how, uh, and including features that exist in Rust itself that are reliant on things like, you know, the standard libraries and stuff that mean the embedded Rust is somewhat behind because they then have to do a lot of work to port certain features um, and there's a bunch of features I'd like to see uh, and maybe we'll come back to that in a bit <clears throat> but even just looking at something as simple as black crab if we look at the code what we're relying on here is the uh, STM32 F7 XX how so I had a lot of work just updating that um, in order to get that working with the ProRS stuff on the previous rooms um, that's now done um, I've been adding the spy stuff in that in itself I mean, what didn't help, of course, was me looking at the wrong HAL implementation. I was looking at the uh, H7 rather than the F7. You know, it's frustrating that they're not the same, that they're actually different. But obviously, wasting lots of time looking at the wrong one is not helpful. Um, so you've got the HAL layer there. And then on top of that, we've got the... Um, RTIC layer. Now the RTIC layer is um, is enabling us to create um, a tasked structured um, set of code. Um, under what they call a kind of you know an app app style description so th these um, attributes and things here are setting off very specific Arctic supported features and those in themselves are actually quite complex so we've got different le levels of complexity here and obviously with that other change that I did the other weeks, we had to go from a, an early 0 0.5, 0 0.6 version up to um, a 1.0 version. That again changed the way that things were working. 
Um, I think eventually this will become much easier because we won't be trying to hit moving targets. I think embedded rust itself will structurally be more um, more understandable, less alien. Um, and I'm wondering whether Arctic will be the way forward. I think there are other ways, um, not right now, but in the coming months, perhaps, when certain problems get solved, I think we can um, change the structure slightly to make it much easier to understand. And by doing the right kind of work up front, it will make it easier for people coming in. They won't have to deal with uh, a lot of the issues that we have. I think that'd be a big difference. The type thing is another problem, and I'm still not quite there. Um, perhaps some more generic approaches can help solve some of that stuff. Although at some point you do have to hit some hard types. Um, and the way that these types are expressed um, as kind of embedded types makes that complex and a good use of type aliasing can simplify that to a degree but it's an extra extra step really um, so what's your space on that I am investigating different ways of doing this at the same time it's just all of the support that's required in order just to do the firmware that we need isn't quite there yet so um, that will come and when it does come we can switch over to a slightly different model that's going to be easier to understand easier to build upon i'm not going to say it's going to be like arduino like i don't think it's ever going to be quite that easy but it will be much more approachable um, so just moving on to the code uh, let me check messages here no complaints on the audio so so far so I am hoping it's okay um, the interesting thing so when uh, on the last stream I think it was what we did was that we added some um, basically added in some more hard SPI support okay so what I did was I created a new um, hard SPI um, structure and implementation to complement the soft F FPI so that I could swap between the two um, but I was having a great deal of problem actually when it came to getting this to work because what was happening was um, first of all I had problems with this type um, that is the type of the <clears throat> the SPI um, device want of a better word and within that we have the SPI instance which is an instance of SPI 4 because there's several different spy pieces of hardware within the uh, within the microcontroller the STM32 in this case um, we have a tuple of pins associated with the physical IO of those um, and this is using that newer alternate mode feature um, these are the um, from the I think these are const generic version versions of these um, 
So we've got three pins here, which are, I can't remember which way around these are. I think it might be clock, misu, mozzie, but don't quote me on that. It'll be further down. And the other thing that we worked out is we needed to tell it what the word size was for the SPI reads and writes. In this case, um, it's a unsigned eight eight bit um, eight bit word. Um, then I think I'm, I'm trying to remember how we left it because I haven't really done much since then. Although I did sort out some of the issues because. Um, I mean, there's quite a lot of cleaning up we need to do with this as well. Maybe we can do some of that today. Um, in terms of the cleanup, we need to look at things like all these imports and stuff. These crate uses, that can be streamlined a little. Um, one of the issues I had was this lock free. I was actually putting that on the instance rather than on the definition of the struct. So I fixed that because it was complaining it didn't recognize the attribute. And once that was fixed, that, that sorted out some of the issues between the tasks wishing to use the different, um, the shared resources, if you like. Um, let me scroll down here and try and remember. So we've got the spy mode structure set. The creation of the new spy for the F7 how, not the H7 how, which was the way that I was trying to do it before, um, is now done properly here. So we're passing in the device instance, i.e. 4. And then, as I said, the three pins, the, um, the serial clock, the Miso and Mozzie, which we've created as alternate mode five pins, uh, which you can see here. Hence that type I was showing you at the top, the type alias that I've created that represents this. Um, and then the enable, what that does is that actually starts things, um, start sets up things like, um, the power etc to that peripheral um, sets up the bus so it can talk to that and it's also I set things like the clock divider so this is a divide by 16 so the system clock I think is running at um, is it 108 I might need to check that um, and the SPI mode which we've created here so that's kind of ready to go. And then I had some issues with um, these tasks. It wasn't compiling because it was not liking these locks. The way that these locks work is slightly different to the older version. Not only that, but whenever I was trying to use um, the spy, it was complaining. Um, so in the end, I'm trying to remember the last thing I changed. I think it was this one here. I changed this to mutable. So I don't think this was set to mutable and it didn't like that. Um, and anyhow, I finally got it to compile. Um, Laurie's asking a question. Um, did you get a working, I got a compiling version. I didn't get a working version. I'm going to explain why in a second. I can you program with hard spy? The answer is I cannot program the hard spy for a very simple reason. The way that the current prototype of the ICE logic deck is wired is the same as the ICE logic. Sorry. It's the same as the ICE core, not the ICE logic. Um, and if you remember, uh, wait a minute, can I? Uh, let me see. I I bet I can't show. I can't share the bloody browsers. I was going to check that, and I totally forgot. I do apologise. 
Let me have a look. I wonder if I can Let me just see if I can get this open back up pretty soon. Let me let me re-import this, hold on a sec. It's probably the easiest way. Let me see if I can look at the um, schematic. everything in that's a bit of a pain let me see if I can let me just put that down here can I uh, I need to just get rid of that so if we look at the schematic God, I'm going to have to um, <laughs> go into the settings of KeyCAD. I've forgotten all about this. This is um, annoying. Let me see if I can open the um, KeyCAD window. Please let me do this. It's a bit, a bit large. Let me um, see if I can reduce this slightly. In fact, it's not just a bit large, it is very large. Right, KeyCAD has this weird zoom. I think you can change it in the settings. It's really annoying. <laughs> um, hold on, tools, preferences. Mouse and touchpad. Center zoom and warp coarser on zoom. Maybe that's the weird thing. What happens if I turn that off? Turn that on. Yay! Now it acts like a normal <laughs> zoom. I hate the keycad zoom. I like it a bit more normal. So, um, what I wanted to talk about here was if we look at the SPI, the pins we're concerned with are the um, the, the SPI pins, uh, in particular these. I mean, we do have the WP and hole pins, but let's just ignore those for a sec. It's um, SS, SCK, SO, SI. Now, SO and SI go directly to SO and SI. So the SO pin from the STM32 goes into the FPGA um, what's called STI and the SI goes to the STO. Okay. 
And if we look at the flash, which is also connected to these pins, the SO goes to SO and the SI goes to SI. So the reason that the flash is different from the um, from the FPGA is that the FPGA needs to be able to read the uh, flash. So in other words, the flash is wired to be able to be read automatically when the ICE, uh, ICE 40 starts up. So that means I have, have to connect uh, the pins in a certain way. Now, when I'm writing to the um, ICE 40, I need to swap around my um, serial out and serial in pins because I'm actually writing the other way round with respect to how it's set up to the flash. Um, so that means, um, it's back to front, either when I'm talking to the ICE 40 or talking to the flash, from the point of view of the built-in STM32 peripheral, because those pins are fixed. The master out and master in are in fixed positions. Now, I was, as far as I know, that has always been the case. But interestingly, in the uh, H7, you can do a kind of pin swap. And of course, I'd looked at that, mixed it up with the F7, thinking that maybe I could do it with this. I can't. As far as I can work out, there's no way of doing it, and there's certainly no support for it in the F7. That means when you choose the wiring, you choose that the hardware SPI can either talk to the flash or it can talk to the ICE 40, but it cannot do both. Um, so that answers your question, I'm afraid, Larry. I thought you said you had a way to make the hard SPI work a few streams ago. Yes. That's because I looked at the H7 code, which seems to be and seems to allow you to swap the master out and, and master in. But in this case, it doesn't. Now, the way it's set up before, so just to remind you, when we were bit banging the SPI in order to program the ICE 40, when we were using the pin setup, notice my master out pin, when I'm bit banging, is PE13. Um, hold on. Sorry, you couldn't see that. So if we look at the bit bang, code which I've commented out where I set the pin out my master out is PE13 okay but when I'm setting up the hardware mozzie is PE14 and PE13 is MISO because that's the way that the hardware expects it to be on the pins and what that means is that we can software bit bang the ICE 40, um, we can program the FPGA using the Bitbang, i.e. the soft programming spy, but we can't use the hardware spy. We should, however, be able to talk to the flash, and I'll come back around to that in a minute, because that's wired around the other way around, so the master out and master in pins are correct for talking to the spy. <clears throat> so when I say that the circuit is wired um, for our prototype uh, ICE logic deck here, uh, I did it the same way as ICE core, hoping I can flip these uh, 
master ins and outs, which I haven't been able to do on the F7. <clears throat> So um, that means I can use the hard spy potentially, I'm trying it yet, to talk to the flash, but not to talk to the, um, or to program, sorry, the, um, the ICE 40 directly. I think what I'll do for the next version of the board is I will flip that because I think what we did on the ice core was the wrong way round. <clears throat> so, in my opinion, right the, the, here is my reasoning, my thinking, which is different from the original uh, ice core thinking. Um, let me know your thoughts and feedback on this. So, here's my thinking, right? Surely we should use the hardware peripheral for the thing that's going to make the biggest difference in user experience. What do I mean by that? If we're using the hardware, we should be able to go faster than if we're bit it. If we can go faster, that means we should be able to program the uh, ice 40 faster. I mean, there's a limit. I don't know what that is. I've never really tested how fast we can get up to. I think there is some mention uh, of limitations on that, and it's not particularly high, to be quite honest. But anything that makes programming uh, the ice 40 faster is beneficial to the user. It's less turnaround time. When I do, when I cat my. Um, my file, my bin, my, my FPGA image um, to the board, to the STM32. We want it to hand off and reprogram the uh, ICE 40 ASAP, right, and return back. Now, the faster that spy works, the faster that's going to happen, potentially, right? So the hardware should be used in that case. Not only because it's faster, but also it's more frequent. Writing to Flash is a very infrequent um, occurrence. Mostly when you're developing stuff, you don't need to write it to Flash. You just want to keep programming off the ICE 40 and testing what you're doing. Make sure it's working. You're not bothered about the Flash at that point. Programming the Flash is only really useful. Um, in terms of programming the ICE 40, when you are in a deployment scenario, when you want it to load from the flash and then do some other stuff. Um, <clears throat> so, in that sense, I think using the hardware to program the ICE 40 is better than using the hardware to program the flash. Now, obviously, I can't actually record the decisions. Uh, for ice core, but for whatever the reason was, we decided to do it the other way round. And there's another another reason as well. But hold on, Noise just asked me a question here. But if you don't have it that way round, the ice forty won't be able to read a bit stream from flash, as it can use soft SPI. No, I'm not changing the pinout between the ice forty and the flash lorry, what I'm suggesting here is I change the swap the master, sorry, the SO and the SI on the STM32 so that it favours hardware programming of the ICE 40 so that we can use the hardware peripheral when we're programming the ICE 40. Now, because it's wired that way, when we come to the point that we need to write something to the flash, we will be using the bitbang version instead. Because it's the only way we can make it work because the pins are flipped, right? So that means effectively we have to bitbang any rights to the flash. I have a vague recollection that when we did the ice core and we decided to do it that round, that way round, the limitations uh, that made us think that way was 
that we were writing multiple images to the flash and we were also thinking of using the flash to do a whole bunch of other things that we never actually ended up doing so it was just simply a case of oh there's going to be more that when we write to the flash we have to write more to it than when we write to the ice 40 therefore we should favor hardware when it's talking to uh, the flash rather than the ice 40 but in reality i think because we more commonly program the ice 40 it should be the ice 40 we favor in this regard now the other reason that I think that's important is when you program flash, you don't get much of a speed advantage. Flash writes are slow because they have to be preceded with erases and then the writes themselves are not fast anyhow. So you are not really gaining much from any hardware assistance when it comes to writing to the flash, which is another reason, in my opinion, that if we have to make a choice between soft SPI and hard SPI on the flash or on the ICE 40, the ICE 40 hard SPI is more beneficial than hard SPI on the flash because the flash itself is slower anyhow and we're not really going to gain much advantage. I've convinced Laurie apparently. <laughs> now I will gate what I just said with the single fact that we have a limit to the rate of the information we can transfer to the board in the first place because we're only using full speed USB which is going to slow things down a little bit. But whilst it's receiving information, it can be writing that information. In fact, it does. So it does make an overall difference in, in terms of performance, even if we don't hit the fastest performance. So the actual benefits we may see by flipping which one's soft, which one's hard, they may be small gains. I don't know exactly yet. It will come out in the wash when we try it. At the end of the day, functionally, it won't make much difference. It's not going to stop the thing working it's just an optimization and I think flipping it around the other way so that the hardware is centered to write to the ice 40 and program it as fast as it can is the way to go but we can't do both of them with hardware which is the next other problem that I just want to kick off here so if you look at the original ice <coughs> the MyStorm ice core firmware what it does is it has the mode button so when you press it by default it comes up so that when you program it over USB it programs the ice 40 but if you change the mode by pressing the mode pin and the LED color changes I think uh, I can't remember does the I think the yellow LED comes on if I remember rightly but I can't remember off the top of my head once you've done that then when you shove your program over the USB what happens is it writes that to flash now what goes on underneath in that firmware is when it's talking to the flash what it does as soon as you hit that mode pin it it changes the driver to a hardware driver hardware spy driver um, it actually changes a class which is designed to program the flash um, rather than the class that's designed to program the ice 40 which happens to be a bit bang i.e. Uh, uh, a soft SPI and it flips between the two in Rust that's not going to happen because of the type changes that are involved. We're either instigating the hard SPI or the soft SPI. We can't be doing both. There may be some way of wangling it, but it's kind of tricky. But with the current structure using the RTIC, we load one or the other. So by default, I will have it load the hardware which will 
be the have the pins the right way around to program the SPI. And then if you want to be able to program the flash, what I think will happen, at least temporarily until I find a way around this, is that you will need to basically have some sort of uh, reset pin, effectively, so that when you press the pin on the board, the mode pin, say, because it's still there, so that mode pin is connected to the boot input on the STM32. So if we power it up with that pressed down, it's in DFU mode so you can reprogram over USB the STM32 firmware. In the case where you don't have, you know, uh, an ST-Link or JTAG adapter or SWD adapter. That button is also connected to another pin on the STM32 so it can be read when it's running. Because obviously the boot pin makes no difference when you're running it doesn't change things it only looks at that startup so we can still use that pin so if you were to then press that now under this new scenario what it would do is it would reset the firmware to start up in soft SPI mode to program the flash and having successfully programmed the flash it would then restart itself again or it would stay in flash mode until such point that you press the mode switch again in which case it would then restart itself with hard SPI. The only real disadvantage with this apart from the obvious discontinuity in terms of uh, startup um, is that there might be slightly more of the delay. You can't just switch modes willy-nilly in the same way that you can on the current ice core. So I don't know how people feel about that. Um, if we move on to a more advanced setup later and move beyond the RTIC stuff, we may be able to do something a bit more dynamic. But in the initial firmware, we won't be able to do that because we're going to be using RTIC, which is going to make doing that difficult, if not um, impossible. I mean, there may be, may be a way of doing it that I'm just not aware of yet, but f from what I've looked at, it's not straightforward. So whatever the flash features we provide, and it's not just programming the flash with the image of the FPGA, it may be being able to put data onto the flash that the FPGA needs to read as well. Um, you would have to put it into that flash mode, which would effectively, so if we look at the, um, if we look at the code here, what you have is you have this init task, and that's a run once task. You can think of that if you're from, I know, if you're from the Arduino world, you have a setup function that gets called before your main loop, and it only runs a setup function once. This is a bit similar here. So in order to have this run again, to reconfigure, you know, those pins for soft SPI rather than hard SPI, we have to get it to rerun the initialization. So it will be like a soft reset, effectively. Which, by the way, I haven't worked out how to do in Rust, but I'm pretty sure that that won't be too difficult. So um, in order for that to work as well, we'd have to use oh, some area in the F7 uh, I think the F7 has um, some temporary storage areas for waking up and things that can be used to store things as long as the power is maintained across a reset um, so we need to use something like that basically so we know which mode we're going into um, certainly that's what I'm thinking anyhow let me know your thoughts
uh, on that. So the short answer to your question, I'm afraid, Laurie, is no, I can't program the ICE 40 using the hard SPI at the moment because it's wired around the wrong way to do that. However, we could today, if we wished, um, maybe try and um, talk to the flash to see if that's working because we haven't done anything with the flash yet. So it might be worth, worth um, doing something on that front. So that's kind of where we are with it. Maybe a quick flash test might be nice. Something else I need to do, as I mentioned earlier, is update the repository. I've got to get this stuff done because the I need to make it semi presentable because I'm going to start um, because I'm talking to things like, um, you know, going down a crowd supply type route and I'm talking to people about that and they need to see um, how the project set up and things like that as well so I need to just get some of that up to date because it's a bit um, uh, a bit rough and ready so I need to sort that out but maybe we can do some spy stuff first. So that's kind of where we are. Um, what else regarding the spy stuff? Is there something else that I did? I did find some really weird things. I w when I was getting the um, errors with the updated RTIC and it complaining with me trying to use the hard SPI. It was complaining in more than one tasks about the way that the lock was structured. But it was kind of odd. I only had to change one of them to actually fix it. Which I found was a bit, a bit odd because um, let me just double check here. Which one did I change? I think the one I changed was this one I think it was this one but you would have thought that it needed me to change the others as well that was what was really weird. But then it compiled and ran OK. Um, if I look at this one, what did I change? See, here I haven't made program, program mutable. I just had it regular here. And then in the locked part, I use a mutable uh, reference and it was happy with that but it wasn't happy when I did that for this one no not this one this one which is just really strange so there was some inconsistency there with the borrow checking straight s s slash um, stuff that's going in the background that RTIC does to manipulate shared variables. Because um, it does, t it, the new version does talk about that's changed because one of the other things that I had to add if you remember I can't remember if I covered this actually I might not have covered it on the um, um, actual stream it might have done otherwise so what I'm doing here is I'm adding this lock free 
the idea of the lock free is as long as one task I think is um, higher priority than the other one can safely access it without interfering with the other and RTIC will handle that as long as you indicated that that's kind of how it's used but anyhow so there was some inconsistency there that I didn't understand uh, when we were trying to get this to work um, I guess we should maybe try and talk to the um, SPN. Let me see, let me make sure that I can actually talk to this damn thing because I've had this board apart today. So I was taking some pics. Let me make sure I can actually run it. That might be nice. Before we start messing with it. Yeah, so now it runs, right? Which is a good sign. Hmm. Which it certainly wasn't doing in the last stream. Uh, one thing I need to do. So what we can do here is we can spawn. Um, I think I do it here. I think I spawn. Uh, I've got it. Um, disabled here but if I were to spawn manage um, if we look at the manage task uh, this is designed to um, write something so uh, I think initially we use this for um, prior to using the QSPI we were using this as a test to transfer SPI data but this uses soft SPI, so we probably want to change this slightly um, in order to work maybe with the flash. So we could, for instance, write a small um, uh, like a test to read read the ID of the flash chip. Let me have a look. Somewhere here. Right, let me have a look through. I'm just having a look online, bear with me, at the old um, ice core. Let me see what we have. I wonder if I've got a check ID function here. Example. Get flash ID. Example flash comms. So what we could do here, so this is the old one, and it, where is it getting SPI from? From there. So it should be coming through here. So if I, one of the things I'm going to need is, um, let's, let's put it in here actually. Um, Uh, command. Oh, no. Yes, command. Uh, oh, crikey, what is it? Hmm. ID 
the command. So, is that right? Um, there's two commands here, that's interesting. Okay. Um, let me just make a note of this. The other command is this. I need to work out what's what. I don't think I've commented this on the other source code, which isn't good. I don't know why there's two commands. So effectively what you need to do is you need to do So our normal process here will be there's a few things we need to do which just complicate this slightly. So we're saying if it's programmed do this. That's not necessarily true in this case, but um, what we have to do is we have to um, in the old oh crikey in the old ice core software we had to. Um, get to release flash and then free the flash um. And we do not have that facility. Um, let me just have a look here. So release flash, free flash.
bear with me I'm just checking the um, source the ice core source code because I'm trying to find out what freeing and releasing the flash actually did Oh, there must be a my storm header. Hold on. I don't think it's in the flash file. <sighs> no. Right, so let me just make some notes here. Um, release flash. Release flash would be how GPIO write pin, uh, hold pin set, set hold pin. Okay. And um, what was the other one I said? Free flash, was it? Flash. Command. What that did was um, free flash set WP pin. There were other two. There was hold flash, so release flash, like hold flash. Then just I've got this written down. Hold, oh. hold flash, uh, reset, hold. I guess is that right? Re hold flash is a reset. Yeah, the hold pin. And then the other one that we had was um, protect flash. Uh, reset oh. WP pin. This was the old terminology inside the. Um, inside the logic for ice core so if I go back now to the flash what else was there go back to the flash code
So to uh, run ID to get uh, ID, we need to do the following. Uh, we need to do run this flash. Um, free flash. Oops, I keep doing that. And then we need to um, CS select. In fact, we actually want to do a transfer because I want to read back, I think, from an expy. Right. Spy uh, trans. Trans. Thank you, spy transfer. Talks about free bytes. So it writes once and it reads three bytes back. So do I have to send two dummies on the transfer then? I can't remember how that works. Um, so how many total reads free? So let's let's just assume plus mm, plus mm, plus two dummies. Then. I think um, CST select. So that's the first part, and then there's a second part which does the same sort of thing again. As this, but the command. Um, in fact, so that would be this one. And then this would be um, the second. Turn is the ID result
So somehow we need to turn that into something we can print out, I guess. Uh, Laurie says, didn't free and release, just write WP and hold things. Yeah, that's exactly what they did. Um, and is there anything? That, that's it. That's all that that does. Um, but in the original ICE, um, ICE core software, it also converts that manually, that result to hex. I don't know if we need to do that or not. I've not sure what the library supports like for that, but um, that's effectively what we have to do now. In order to do the manipulation of the um, uh, the flash WP and. Um, hold pins we're going to need to pass in something different so I think what I'm going to do here is just create a new task rather than corrupt this one so let's do that here what's I remember um, and I'm going to need to pass in programmed SPI and I'm going to pass in the new thing called flash which we'll look at in a sec Same. Um, what's this going to be called? Let's call it the flash task for now. Flash ID. Keep it simple. Um, what else we're going to need? We're going to need something like that. And we're going to need these notes because they don't need to be there anymore. Okay, so before we can use this, then uh, let's just do our flash stuff. So, in the same way, here we've got hard and soft SPI. Let's do a struct called. Um, uh, what should we call it? Um, <clears throat> uh, mm. Should these be caps? Is that be camera paste? So what have we got to house here? We've got to house some pins, haven't we? Um, let's have a look. What are the pins that we need to house? These, right? Uh, 
I really do need to um, refactor all of this. It's a right mess. So if we have WP and hold, uh, output push pull. Hydrate time. Um, oh, yes, these are types. Okay, so I need to import import these here. Yep. Okay. Right, so it recognizes those. Um, so my implementation for this is um, flash so I'm going to need a new uh, that's going to be That's going to return uh, flash. Uh, 
pass in That's right. Doesn't look pretty, but that's pretty much how you do it. So, um, function. So, what's the first function we need? What did we need? We needed release. Um, release oh it's the old um, Self, isn't it? And all we're doing here is we're going to be doing um, what was released? What did we say it was? Right, so uh, release was um, hold pin. Oh, it's not hold, it's HLD. Dot set. Oh no. You twat. Um, self. Oops, not H. 
reach them. Come on, come on, come on, man. Uh, hold, release. And... Hold, release, and then we want... Uh, contact. And... Free. And it probably wouldn't hurt to have combination functions. Um, like a flash enable. Maybe. Do because we might not even need these other ones. Um, so if we did enable, what that would effectively do is it will call uh, release. Then it would call uh, free. And then the equivalent would be Disable. Disable, that's good. And that would do the opposite, which would be I guess it would be protect and then hold I guess I need to add this to um, Oops. There's a bit of this as well because I'm using it in the same sort of positions. Mm. 
this I can clean up later. There's an easier way of doing this. Uh, oh, come on. Does that pick it up now? Yeah, it picks it up. I think what we can do here, the normal trick is you do this. You don't need those. Um, by the way, what this is doing is inside app, what we're doing is we're trying to get access to the things that are outside of the app because these are defined outside here. Normally these will be in different files. In this case, they're in the same file. And by using this, that basically imports everything out here. In fact, but that might be dangerous if there's any name flashes, but I think we're okay. Um, so we've now got flash here, so we need to add flash after SPI here. and we need to create it um. equals what is it equal equals uh, flash Here we need to do WP comma uh, and now we should be um, good to go. So from here, we should be able to grab that from shared. Um, we need to add it in here. Sorry, that's probably an easier one. Oh, come on, man. That's not what I meant at all. So here, if we're programmed, I don't think this depends on programming. So what we have to do first is we have to have to do flash uh, in fact we can get rid of this if you don't need it. Flash dot uh, we wanted to enable didn't we? First, and we need CS low. We need low. Uh, 
minus i select. Yeah, so select, then we need to do the transfer. Come back to it in a sec, then we need to do i dot deselect. Okay. We need to repeat this for a minute. Byte count as U8. In fact, I could just hard code this for the moment. It's probably going to upset a few things. But let's just go with the flow. Don't know if we need to do that. And then I don't think we need the select and deselect in between actually, but let's just that's the way it's written in the I score, so Let's just comment that out for a second. So it would look something like that. But actually, this should be. I'll go back to the transfer. I want this really. This signature. But I'm already using that. I'm not using transfer elsewhere.
Oops. Is it that? Okay, so you were right, 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 all done. No. Okay, yeah, my, hmm, right. The difference between transfer and write is, um, When you do a right, all, when, when we're doing a right here, all we're doing is we're taking the information in this array and we're writing it out. We're not changing this. But in the transfer case, what happens is um, it changes this with whatever the response is from the SPI right. So this has to be mutable, but I don't think you can just do that like that. Um, this has to be defined as mutable to start with. Mm. So when I use bytes here, I cannot borrow a mutable local variable bytes as mutable. Make bytes mutable. Or is it because I've done it? Or is that? Or oh, I confuse myself entirely. Is that right? Very confusing. I'm not sure if that's right or not. That looks wrong to me for some reason. <sighs> but the other thing is I need to return
need to return the buffer. So that's a reference. So I'll change that. This should change. That changes that. Right, let's just go back. Hold on. So, um, what I don't understand here. is why we're writing to so it fills it out on like three it's like we've got two things so what we really want here then is um, do we want this to be That needs to be that. Um, I think not quite sure why that is. I think it's expecting uh, this format. Actually, The issue here is that, um, sorry, I drank. When we send this, I mean, initially, if we were sensible, this would be. Um, and then what we can do here is. Same here. Um, and that needs to be um,
Where is that thing coming up? Let me see that. Do the same thing here. <coughs> For the second part of the transaction, and that should be that one. The only issue might be. We're not interested in response here. I wonder if that should just be a right. I don't know if this is going to mess things up. Because what I'm worried about is the buffer being changed. What's it saying? Mismatch type. Unexpected. Oh. Oh. Oh, shit. Right on. I mean, I could do that to fix it temporarily, but I really need to allow for any length, I guess. Ooh. Just wonder if that fixes it temporarily. don't know if that's a good idea. I need to come back to that. I do change that back. Yeah, that might work. Oh. 
Um, Should it be? It should be. Should be, should be, should be. Uh, what value should it be? I can't remember what it should be. And if I had this in the ice core stuff. Can we use, right, hold on. I wonder if we can just print it out. Can we do, that in the task. Oh, there are both tasks. Just print out oh God, I can't remember the syntax for this. Is it something like that? Um, this could be a format string, probably. the uh, standard print macro um, stuff is for Rust. Hold on. I mean, what happens if I just put buffer there? 
I don't know if that's going to work or not. Um, so normally this runs um, I think the only thing that worries me about trying to talk to the flash like this is I might need to hold the ice in reset whilst I'm doing this because Otherwise, it might respond to the SPI traffic. Will it respond? Oh, I don't know. Um, that's something we may need to have to check. Uh, so when we do the reset stuff, On. We must do it in here. Look, do 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 do. No, that's your spy reset. What does a spy reset do? It's a reset low. SPI has a reset function here but that actually does a reset um, what I can do is add a disable let's do that I just want to hold the ice forty and reset. So it doesn't interfere with the flash because remember the pins are all connected together. Um, enable ice.
Oh, and I should be using Snipe Chase. Um, Too many. Right, that will do for the moment. Make sure that the uh, ice forty is not um, doing anything. Not uh, let's actually enable. Oh, come on, what is wrong with me and this keyboard? I must get a hang of this. Damn it. And then I re-enable it afterwards. That way I can be sure that the uh, S40 doesn't interfere with any conversation I have with the flash. And I should also have a flash disabled here. Shit. Just to clean things up. Okay, that looks sound. Hmm. Dehydrated. What are we doing time wise? Sorry, this is so slow, folks. Twenty to ten. Okay, so I need to spawn this, what's it called, flash ID. Where do I spawn this? So rather than bringing the USB up, maybe I should spawn this, hold on. Hold your horses. Uh, can I do it in here? Uh, the current spawn occurs from the USB when it receives something. I wonder if I can do it in here. Before any of that stuff happens. Might not let me do that. Let's just see. No idea what's going to happen now. Let's try running it. Probably going to complain about all sorts. There we go. Yeah. Hmm. Typos. 141. Oh. That's a bit weird. How did I manage to do that? It's really odd. Before 
270. Mm -hmm. It'd be really nice to have music, wouldn't it? Uh, 470. Yeah, Christ. Why is it complaining about the panic handler function required but not found? I didn't change any of that, did I? Error. Panic handler function required but not found. I haven't changed that stuff. What? 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 WTF. Why is it saying that? I haven't changed any of that. Um, this task handler must have a type signature and a flash only context. SPI context. When I call it from here, it looks fine. Wait a minute, have I got context here? Maybe I need to pass context. Do I have to put CX here? Is that what it's saying? I'm not sure whether that is what it's suggesting. <sighs> there we go again. No, it doesn't like that. Flash ID CX. Oh, no. I know what it is. I've re I've made, I've, it was a copy and paste rename. Of course it was. Problems, lots of warnings. Yeah, I can remember those in a moment. Unit three doesn't implement display. Yeah, it doesn't like that. I thought that might be the case. Maybe I can just do um, one digit. Um, or all of them. So if I do damn it. What if I can do does this work? I can't remember exactly.
think that's just fair old, isn't it? And I can do that. I just don't like it. Have killed it. Lots and lots of warnings. What's this? Cannot borrow data from uh, at references mutable. Oh shit, here we go. One and two. Be a problem. I uh, should probably be mutable. Oh, I just its contents. Hmm. Maybe will they? Maybe I'm totally wrong. Oh, it doesn't like that because it's not sized. I'm not going to convert that to box because that will just totally confuse me. Could I then say... Uh, 
I might have expected that, compiler. But I'm not sure. No. Oh, no, 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 no. Yes, 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 Expected slice and It's a slice. Hmm. <laughs> Boy, that is mutable. Wait, but it expects us. Oh, shit. I don't suppose as as mutable slice. As mutable slice. I know I'm going to really just end up confusing myself here around the borrow checker. This is what I'm doing wrong in the first place then. Right, I'll just take this all the way back and then I can work my way forward.
Do I still have to make that beautiful? That's the reference, so I can't be right. sure that that's right either. Yay, at last. Flash response was 255-138-10. Interesting. Um, let me just check the data sheet, actually. What's, I've forgotten what the damn part is. Hold on. Uh, oh, bugger. Oh, I could read it off the... Um, can I read it off? Oh, shit. I don't have the bill of materials on me. Right. Just a second, I need to locate this. I must have some sugar. Um, can't remember. Let's see if I can find this chip. I can't remember what size this chip is. Let's have a look at the four megabit one. I don't know if this returns the right thing. If I do a ID Oh, it's going to take ages this way. Hold on. Um, it's going to be an easier way of doing this. Let's have a look for the index. What? No freaking index. Read command. Read commands. Command array. Read. 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 Array. Read. Page. Read. Buffer. Read. Program and arrays commands. Read, modify, write, page arrays, block arrays, chip arrays, blah, 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 blah. I don't want that. I need program arrays, sector protection. No, come on. Security. No, security register. Additional commands, main memory page, main auto page, status register read. It's 
not status register read, is it? It's um, ID. Ah, manufacturer and device read. Manufacturer ID. Right, manufacturer and device ID information it talks about manufacturer ID, device ID, device ID, byte two, then two optional bytes, four and five, which I'm obviously not looking at. Um, different um, this is going to be so they're saying hex first byte one FH which is the manufacturer ID Hold on. Two, um, five. So you would have the FF, but second it says 24H, hang on, two, four, decimal, no it's hex. I can hear, which would be three, six. In decimal, <clears throat> yeah, none of this is matching with what's in that data sheet. Uh, the manufacturer ID should be the same, that should be 1F, but I'm getting 255, which is FF. Can I get print LN to... Hmm.
Drinkum, so hello to everyone. We've been finishing your suppers. Hello. You want to go through the door again, or do you want to go out? Through here? No? Outside. Uh, maybe I can do this then. Um, X maybe just try that yeah let me try this That's better. FF eight A zero A, which is entirely different from what I expect, which is worrying. Hmm. Laurie Griffith says on Black Ice MX I get zero X. 1F8401 Well what you get is right because 1F is definitely the manufacturer Odesco 84 is the well, 84 and 01 are the device IDs themselves. So that's going to vary by the chip size. Now, the chip I have on here, as far as I know, it was an, Ades um, an Adesto flash. But I can't, off the top of my head, remember what the um, size was. So getting FF8 a O A seems a bit weird. And this one you can see what the um what the chip it is hold on um 
Now I can't easily see that. Hold on, let me look at. I'm not sure where I took the part from. Damn it. Um, out through here I'm not sure I got it from in here I might have got it from the main my main parts I'm just wondering if I actually put the right chip on there I'm pretty sure I did I think it's more likely that my code is wrong most likely case Bits be switched around. Well, even if they switch around, that wouldn't be right. Um. What do I do on black ice? Hold on. I mean, the one F and FF I don't understand, so they should all be... Hmm. Ones. Bear with me a sec. Just going to put a holding pattern in. I'm going to do two things. I'm going to get another drink because I'm running out. And secondly... Um, I'm going to... Um, Um, just see if I can grab the components from elsewhere. Uh, let me just find hmm, something suitable to hold up. Oh, wait. What format do these file? Oh, they have to be. Why can't I see? I can see those JPEGs. Why can't it see any of these files?
That's worrying. I put a load of files in there earlier. Why can't you see them? Is it because they're not formatted? Holy, holy, holy. Yes, dot JPG. Why can't it see that? Home pictures ILD. That is really odd. Is it because it's uppercase? Expects it to be lower J JPJ. I didn't realise that. Where was that? Right, back in a sec.
Right. Let me just quickly look something up. Um, Twenty-five SF one six one. Just looking up um, some chips here to check. That's interesting. This may be Renesis. Did they buy this stuff? It says Renesis on Octopart, but it says Odesco on the data sheet, interestingly. Read ID, which is the 90 command. Read manufacturer device ID is 9F. Read ID, which is legacy command. Manufacturer ID is 1FH. Uh, device ID 86 01. Uh, so that's what I should be getting. I didn't realize that a disco must have been bought by Renesis. Um, but the ID should be one F eight six zero one. What's the command I'm sending? Is it nine zero or nine six one? Nine F. Which is the right one. So that should be one one F eight six zero one, which is much more like um, what Laurie's getting. But obviously the numbers are slightly different because it's a different size. Um, this is a 16 megabit rather than a 4 megabit. I think Ice Core might have had a 4 megabit. But that's what it should be reading. Let me. Hmm. There is one other possibility. I've got some more flash stuff here. I don't know if this is. Um, chip on seems unlikely but it 
25 Q32 25 Q32 JVSLQ Wind Bomb 1 um, I do have some other flash chips here. <laughs> I'm just double checking, mate. These shouldn't. JVS and IQ. Digi Key, you're showing the wrong picture. That is not an 8 psych. Um, what does it say on their data sheet? Shifting instruction for 9F, the JDEC sign manufacturer ID. Wind bond is EF, so it can't be a wind bond one, which is the other ones I have here. That's got me confused, so why is it reading that wrong? should be 1F not FF. It should be it should be 1F 8601. I'm getting yeah it's not making sense uh, how are you getting that ID reading are you just calling the function Laurie. I think the OXAB, the reason that we have to send that first is to wake the chip up. I seem to remember something like that. You have to wake the chip up first before you then query. I don't know if you need a delay before that though. Would that make any difference? But uh, just a quick delay in between those two in case that makes any difference. I don't think it does, but just in case. So we do wake up first, then we'll do a delay. Then we'll issue the um, ID query, just in case that makes any difference. Well, strangely, I get a completely different result, which is telling me something's very fucked up. I wonder, could the um, ice chip be interfering? Disable ice should have that. Hold low. Let me just check I am disabling the ice. Oh dearie dearie. In 
Enable ice takes the reset high. Disable ice takes the reset low. I don't like that I'm getting inconsistent results. That is most definitely an issue. Disable ice, enable ice, disable ice, set it low, enable ice. Set it high. Let me just check the sequence I go through on ice core. So you do flash wake, flash wait, what the hell is flash wait?
Yeah, you're doing um, quite a bit more than I'm doing. Why are you running flush weight in your code? Going to increase this delay. Where did that flash weight come from, um, Laurie? Your flash weight uh, um. <clears throat> Hi, I post, by the way. Um, yeah, in, in if I look at your um, I look at your code that you just linked to, uh, Laurie. You you do a flash wake, then a flash wait before you go and do the um, ID query. Now, obviously, the flash wake I'm doing. But not the flash wake. Uh, sorry, wait. Uh, your, fl your flash wake is um, just the same as mine. It takes it out of sleep mode. But the flash wait is um, you're transferring OX05 continually until you receive back OX01. What happens if you remove it? Does it still work? I don't like that mine changed after a delay, I tell you that. Without the delay, it reads something different. But it's messed up somehow, and I'm wondering if I'm wondering if somehow the ice is still interfering with it maybe I need more delays Still in the same. Hmm. Ah, uh, you're not set up. Okay. I'm definitely doing something wrong here. I'm pretty sure in my original code that I didn't have a delay in the ice core code. But I haven't run that flash ID for a long, long time. I think it literally, all it did was, um, 
is it just um, sent me took it out of sleep command first and then sent the um are you coming back in now twinkles and then sent the um the um identity command I think something else is going on here and I'm not quite sure what but a bit more sugar might help I don't like what I'm getting back. I'm really suspicious of that FF. Hmm. Hold on. What frequency am I running this damn thing at? Been through. Let me slow it down. Ah, oh, do thirty two. See if this makes any difference. I have no idea what speed I was running that at. Oh, that doesn't change anything. Oh, Twinkles, you've been finishing your suppers. You can come say hello to the folks, or you just have to attentions. Mm -hmm. You're just after attention, aren't you? Hey. Say hello again. Is it attention that you're after? Is it? Enough. Hmm? <laughs> Attention's magnet. Um, hmm. That's a bit worrying. I wonder what the divs are. Can I go even lower than that, maybe? Um, Div 120, 256, look, that's pretty slow. No, oh, I get exactly the same response. Can't do that. Oh, I'll tell you what it could be is the SPI mode. Which What SPI mode are you using? God, I can't even remember what I'm using on my ice core. Um, hmm, crikey. Where did I set this? I know where it would be. Oh, yes. Um, this is the... Um, Uh, STM32 HAL. It will be the SPI in it. Where is the SPI in it? I squared to see. SPI3 in it. Let's roll them. 
No, no, you want to go through the door again? Well, you would do, because it's closed. What a surprise. I bet I've got the wrong mode. Um, R2C, quite as PI, R2C. MX Spy 3 in it. Spy Mode Master, Spy Direction 2 Line, Spy Data Size 8 Bit, Spy Polarity Low, Spy Phase 1 Edge. Spy Polarity Low, how does that relate to the way that we're doing this here? Spy Polarity. Would that be idle? Low then. Idle low. Phase capture on first transition. What we're we saying. And phase, they're saying SPI phase one edge. I mean, what are our choices? Picture on first transition, I think. So let's just save that change, if that makes any difference. Oh, will I get a different result? That's more like it. I'm getting the right result now. So I was in the wrong spy mode. Um, my polarity should have been um, idle low, not idle high. I'm now getting FF, 1F86. No, the FF, you don't need to worry about. It. That was the first byte. It's, the, it's shifted by another. If I had four bytes. I would have got the uh, final one as well. Yay! Just kind of working. It was the mood. So I had to the right flash on these ones. And these are Adesco ones. Although it's interesting that that's now Renaissance. I didn't even know that until um, I just read that on Octo Park. Good, good, good. So why are we getting 1F86? That first, that first byte, why is that zero? Because, why is that FF? Because, is that the result from the... wake up what happens if I change it let's change it to four hold on let me just change did I set the size here yeah. Um, the spy chip is at the end of my finger there so height wise in between the um, uh, FPGA and the STM32 but to the right I need a pointer thing Oh, we've moved it now. Now I'm in trouble. Pointer thing. Pen knife thing. This one. So 
the soy cake package. Um, what was I looking at? Oh yes. Um, Why is it picking up that first bite though? I'll just change this to four temporarily. It doesn't seem like the right way to fix it to me, but let's just humor it for a second. I don't know if this is going to do it as I think it is, which just cause a different problem. Oh. Dance. so lazy when you do too much python <laughs> honestly attention today. To be fair I didn't really get to sleep until very late last night. I was feeling knackered most of the day. Now of course I am fully awake which is a pain. Well I stopped for the stream but it will be later when I want to go to sleep. FF1F8601. Bingo. That was what I wanted wasn't it? Better check. One F eight six O one. Yes. Why are we getting the FF first? Oh, I'm being a dunce. Of course, because when you're doing the SPI transfer in duplex mode, the first byte has to be transferred before the first bite comes back. So you're always a bite later. Oh! Right. That's good. It took us a long time to do that, but at least we know the SBI is working. But what's interesting is, yeah, I'm now going really, really, really slow and I shouldn't be. So let's just whack that back up again. Something more sensible. Uh, let's see if that still works. <clears throat> yes, yes, yes. He's quite happy with that. Good, good, good. Uh, so we know we can now talk to the flash if we need to. Which is excellent. Uh, we will leave that as an exercise for the reader, I think. How are we doing for time, anyhow? Yeah, it's late. I think I'm going to call it quits while I'm ahead. So we know that the spy, hardware spy is working from the STM32. We know the connections are good. 
Not only to the IS-40, because we've already tested that, but also to the flash using the hardware. And we know that it is flipped that way around in terms of the hardware use. So what I think I will probably do is flip it on the next version. So it's the other way around, so we can use the hardware. Oh, excuse me. Use the hardware to do the um, IS-40 programming. I mean, what I could do is write some of the flash code now, now that I know that's working. I know it would be wrapping a hard, hard flash, but it doesn't matter. Hard SPI. It will work equally well with the soft FPI when I do it. But at least I could get that code written. Um, it'd be good for reads, but we're not really using it for reads. Although there might be, I was thinking about this the other day. Um, the STM32 could use the S, use the flash for storage as well. We've got 16 megabits, so we've got four megabytes. That could be useful for a whole number of things. To a degree, the um, FPGA is not going to need it because uh, we're going to have, you know, hyper flash and hyper RAM together uh, that it can utilize, which are much faster. But there may be uh, a backwards compatible thing, like a lower cost configuration that doesn't have the hyper RAM added on the mezzanine. Or a hyper flash that could lean back on the um, spy flash. But really, if you were going to do that, you wouldn't put it on the spy, you'd put the flash on the quad spy. And then you'd have to mux it with the Q spy events, and that'd be difficult because the current Q spy driver has hardware. Uh, chip select. I don't think there's any way of separate, separating out a secondary chip select. Anyhow, thank you guys for bearing with me. You are very patient. Um, oh, my post has got a question. Um, he was saying that he swizzled his SPI a few times. Um, curious, is your code partially STM32 CPP code combined with Rust code or all Rust? It's all Rust, I post. Black Crab is all Rust from the bottom up, including the debugging is now Rust as well. So there's no GDB or open OCD involved. It's just, it's just doing it with Rust. The whole caboodle, which is nice. Um, right, so I'm going to call it a day. Um, we didn't get a chance to do the repo stuff. I might have to do that tomorrow. It's kind of a bit of a boring one on the stream anyhow. But um, at least I know I can get the flash code done. Um, one thing I haven't done yet is written an image to the flash and tried booting the IS-40 from the flash. I guess I should make an effort to do that. Um, just to close all of the, uh, all of the testing off. Um, Is there something else I was going to cover? Uh, I know we talked about the repo. Oh, these have gone all murky again. I know we talked about uh, updating the repo for the uh, logic deck. I've got some more picks to add to that. I mentioned the crowdsourcing thing. Um, 
can't remember. I think that's all we were going to deal with tonight. Right, okay. Thank you for bearing with me. And um, I might do some more on Friday. Let's see how it goes. I'm not sure what my time's going to be like this week. I do have a lot on. But if I get some spare time on Friday, maybe I'll do a second stream on Friday. Maybe we can do a bit of the Flash stuff on Friday. That'd be kind of cool. Okay, ciao folks. I will uh, see you on my next stream. I will be down on Discord if you want to talk, carry on talking. Um, and if not, I, yeah, I'm around in between now and the next stream. Um, so see you guys there.